Hello guys, this is Panzermeister 36 and today's video is going to be a look at a bunch of 3D printed stuff. I'm working on a lot of projects. I'm a very purposeful and methodical builder. Not slow, purposeful and methodical. And I have bought a lot of aftermarket accessories that I want to show you guys on projects I'm working on. But because my projects are taking so long, I'm basically just saying, you know, why don't we just do like a quick look at each product, uh, see how good they are. And then that way you guys won't have to wait months and months for, to finally see some things that are quite relevant maybe today. So I've got tool clamps and I've also got things like uh, return rollers and wheels and details, boxes, lights, uh, some tools, muzzle brakes and such. Uh, mainly we're going to focus on the tool clamps I think. And hopefully this video is not super long but let's just start. Alright, you guys are going to get some sneak peeks of some of my projects here. On my projects now I mainly use the MJ Miniatures tool clamps because I think they are the best because they are really nicely detailed and they also actually fit the tools. An issue with some of the 3D printed tool clamps is they are actually 100% to scale but then the, the actual tools themselves are slightly overscale so that when you try to mount the in scale tool clamps over the handles it doesn't actually fit. The MJ Miniatures clamps are basically the best in my experience. I think they were the original ones too. Uh, so we'll take a look at those and some other examples as well. So here's the MJ Miniatures clamps. This is the standard set here with the open and close type 1 and uh, type 2 clamps. So it's pretty all-inclusive. Now if you want to do like a Panzer IV or a Lux, they use different types of clamps with wing nuts that aren't available in resin. I've done a full video on looking at using these parts on that Panzer III I just showed you. I'll link that but basically these ones are, in my opinion, the best. So here I have the T-Rex Studio tool clamps, and these ones are supposed to be one of the examples that are so realistic and in, in scale that they don't actually fit tools, shafts, into the clamps themselves. So let's give that a try. We're just gonna try to put it over the handle of this pickaxe, which is a fairly small handle, and it's not going to fit. No, it's not. So what they say is true, you cannot actually mount these T-Rex Studio clamps onto most of the tools. And this is a dragon pickaxe, by the way, so which is one of the more fine examples. So uh, like a Tamiya tool is going to be even thicker than this. The Rasha model tool clamps are also the same. They're also supposed to be so small that they do not actually fit onto the shafts of various tools you can get in kits. And that is why I recommend the MJ Miniatures examples. So these are Panzerwerk Design. These are specifically Stug 3 late Alcat production only uh, cable clamps. Now these are available from a few different manufacturers. Previously the only real example was uh, the model cast in set A7 which is plastic parts and they include them here but they're a little bit over scale. I'll show a photo comparing these to the Panzerwerk ones. So these Panzerwerk ones look really, really fine. I posted them on Facebook and people asked if they were even going to fit um, over the cables in a kit. So we're going to try that right now. If you can see here, they barely fit on just the taper on the back of a Dragon cable loop. And the same is true for the Ryfield model Stug kits. You can just get them over the, the taper at the base of the of the crimp here for the cable loop, but they don't actually slide on all the way because probably these are over scale and these are probably pretty close to accurate. So the Panzerwerk design uh, Stug late cable clamps are a little bit too small for the kit molded parts. They look like they might barely squeeze on the 3D printed T-Rex cable ends that I used, but I can't verify that because since they're already on the kit, you might have to just kind of sand down the plastic cable crimps a little bit to get these to fit or you can just leave them empty as is pretty common on late stooks. Now here's a comparison. This whole set right here is a Elephant Model Corporation uh, set for a late stug, which has the same clamps and you can see they are significantly larger and they're definitely going to fit the plastic parts that are a little bit over scale in the kits. So if you want the detail to fit but be a little over scale then that's an option if you want to go more realistic then you can go with the Panzerwerk design option. Let's also take a brief look at this set while we're here. You can see it also comes with the little cable, you know, little C-shaped guys that the cable actually wraps through on the engine deck or on the fenders of a Panzer III or a Stug. And we even have the jack clamps, which I've never used, but they look really good on here as well. And looking back at my Panzer III, you can see an example of one of those 
cable clamps being used right there. They look really good. I also have another set here from the Elephant Corporation. That's their logo, by the way, because it wasn't on the box. Uh, and this one has set up more for a standard Panzer III, so we have additional cable clamps, standard Panzer III cable end clamps, not those square ones for the late Stug, as I was just showing you. And we have a few other details for the Panzer III Aus M specifically. So these also look really good. I'm going to give them a try soon because I'm also working on a Panzer III M based vehicle. Here I have a set which is from FC Model Trend, and FC Model Trend's 3D printed stuff is garbage, so do not buy any of it. So just a minute ago I was talking about how I do not recommend the T-Rex Studio standard clamps because they're way too small. I do recommend their fire extinguishers because they look really good and you have the option for the whole thing assembled or you can have the empty clamps. They also have the uh, the late style ones on like late uh, Stugs for sure. I've noticed them where there's only one strap and it's a little bit different. So if you want to go for this late detail, uh, this is really your only option because the, the kits always give you the standard one molded in plastic in those examples. You can see an example of one of their empty fire extinguisher mounts right there on the engine deck of this Jagdpanzer IV and it looks really really good. And I like having the option to have some clamps empty on a vehicle so that you can have the tools kind of messy and some are missing as you can see one of my wrenches is offset there and such. It adds a lived in look to the vehicle. I just got these in uh, very recently, ordered them from Lithocraft which I think is from Singapore and these are pretty cool. There are uh, some unique types of uh, jack blocks only seen on Stug 3s where they've actually shortened the piece of wood for I guess later war stuff, I don't know. And I also have the same uh, standard jack block for Panzer IV here. Let's take a look at these. It is very impressive the level of detail that they can get with 3D printing stuff nowadays. This is very crisp. It looks as good as if you scraped all the detail off the kit part and put on an Aber Photo Etch PE clamp set for the, the jack block. Like, this is insane. I got the handle and everything. Like, when you when you paint this thing up, you will not be able to tell the difference between this and a full on Photo Etch assembly. There is a wood grain texture there. It is pretty faint, so faint that it might not even get kind of filled in with primer. But, you know, maybe with a wash, you'll get, you'll get it back there. I've got some parts here from a company called Demon Barber Design. They make 3D printed tracks, and I've done separate videos on 3D printed tracks, and I will not look at them today, but Rick Lawler uh, did a good review on these when it took four and said they were very good. We're looking at accessories today that aren't tracks, so I have some parts from them. I've got a 3D printed gun barrel, which is unusual. Usually you get a metal barrel, but these are considerably cheaper. And this is for the KV-2 from Tamiya, which is good because in that kit the gun barrel is like in a half and then the end is a separate piece so it's hollow. But this way it is just one monolithic assembly and it's got like the rifling and everything and it, it looks really, really good. Hopefully you can see that there, but I look forward to putting this on my Tam Tamiya KV-2, which I will build eventually. And I also have some bits here, which are the intake grills for the engine deck of a T-34. Dragon, rifled model, mini art, they're all kind of the same. These look a thousand times better than the molded plastic parts in the kit. Now you might have to scratch build some louvers behind it or just something to block a line of sight because there's no engine in the kit, but small price to pay for what is amazing quality of print. Next up I have some lights here. I've got the ET model and the Heavy Hobby examples here. So I have already used some of these on projects and that's why some are missing. And they are both really, really good. In brown here is the ET model set and in the orange is the Heavy Hobby set. Now they both have slightly different styles for the, the no lens example. There's more going on in there while the, the Heavy Hobby open one is a lot more void. I'm not sure which one's more accurate. Uh, and then, then when you look at the uh, standard ones here, they are really, really similar, but I think in that case, the ET model one is slightly better because the slot is actually a true slot, while on the heavy hobby ones, it's just like a recessed detail, much like on a molded plastic part. Additionally, they both actually have the word Bosch printed very faintly above that slot. It is really hard to see. It is slightly more pronounced on the heavy hobby example but they're both really, really fine. Honestly, both these are really good. Uh, I'm happy with both of them. You can also see that the ET model set comes with some 
empty mounts as well with the little socket and even these ones here which I'm not sure if they're supposed to be like you're supposed to paint them as if they're they have the lens in place but they're missing the cover but that looks kind of bad and I would just use these paint it and then fill it with like some kind of clear resin or something if I was going that route both these examples heavy hobby and ET model are really really good here and they definitely look better than the plastic options in some kits which are really chunky and you don't even get the uh, empty examples like you have here without the actual shield in place for the blackout light so these are really really good to have around to model specific reference photos for example so I have some wheelie bits here I've got some elephant corporation stug 3 and I guess Panzer 3 idler wheels they're actually a set of three you've got a standard type which I'm going to use this on my Panzer 3 there's a later Stug type, like our 1945 Stug type, and they even have a this type again without the bearing lubrication nipple, which I used on one of my Stug projects, uh, which are not modeled in any kit or anything else. So if you really want to do those really late Stugs, you have to go with this set here. And these are absolutely fantastic because they have the, the detail that is impossible to mold in plastic. You can do that with 3D printing. You can make geometry, which is impossible to mold and these are also pretty quick to pop off it looks like it's quite a lot of work but really they just come right off because there's only a small support material there i just hit it with like a sanding sponge for 30 seconds and they look really good i also have some Panzerwerk design late stug return rollers i've got this set plus the two other variants which are just different styles of holes and and reinforcing ribs and they are very very good i will post another photo here comparing them to the rocket model uh, kit parts which are actually quite bad now that I look at them additionally in here there's an, another set which doesn't have a box yet so we just put them inside the other Alcat set and these are the super super rare final pro final production Alcat type which has only ever been noticed in like two vehicles ever so again if you're modeling a really really late vehicle well you kinda gotta go with some of these aftermarket accessories because they're not included in any kits but these look really good and I'm impressed with them for sure. Additionally, Panzerwerk also makes these 3D printed return roller mounts. So uh, these would probably be better on the right foot model kit because it's actually a separate part. On the Dragon kit, these are molded onto the hull so you have to slice them off, uh, which would be quite a lot of work for someone that's hard to see. But if you're doing, let's say, a vehicle with damaged fenders or a wreck or something like that, then you would definitely be able to see the beautiful castle nuts and the casting marks on these much better. And also if you want to have like a missing return roller, this actually has a lubrication nipple and stuff like molded into it. So it looks really, really good. I've got more bits here from Lithocraft. I forgot I ordered these ones. This is a Panzer III style jack assist device, which is not available in any kit either. And it's really uh, surprisingly common to see in photos and no one ever does it. So I'm impressed to have this and I can put them in the stowed wheels on Panzer III's and stuff. Uh, because that's a cool feature and once again not available in any kit. Here these are the standard toolboxes for Panzer 3 and Stug 3. Let's crack this one open and take a look. And much like the jack blocks we took a look at before, these are printed incredibly crisply and they even have little locks on them which is very impressive. So I will definitely be using these to replace the poorly molded examples in all my Dragon Stugs soon. And they also make a bunch of different tie down styles. There's probably like six different sets. I think they even have a US one as well. So depending on what your vehicle is, if you want to replace the molded on tie downs, these are a great example. And they're much easier to work with than any of the photo etch. And the photo etch ones don't even look right because they're two dimensional. So while I have panned Russian models 3D printed tracks and also their 3D printed tool clamps for being too small, they do have some excellent accessories that are in different areas. So for example, they have a whole set of different jacks here. Not only the 10 ton, which is a Panzer III, Panzer IV style, they also have the Tiger and the Panther 15, 20 ton examples. They also have muzzle brakes. And there's a lot more different shapes in muzzle brakes than the kits give you these days. So if you're modeling a specific vehicle, as I plan to do, you might have to get some of these sets to get the exact right muzzle brake. These are all 3D printed as well, and they look super impressive. Let's crack open a couple. There's a lot of support structure on these, but I have worked with some of these sets before from Rosham. Some of their antenna bases for British vehicles and such. And the cleanup is actually quite easy because of how fine the support structures are. So here's part of the jack, the, uh, the the foot and the handle and stuff are still in there. But you can see this looks way better than the big plastic blobs you get in the kits because it actually has 
the handle as a handle. Hopefully you can see that. And the bolt detail and everything is much more refined. And some of them even have, maybe if I can find it, yeah, this one here it shows even has like a little maker stamp on it. These are gonna look really, really good on a model, especially if you combine them with some of those uh, 3D printed jack clamps like I showed you from the Elephant Corporation set earlier. As for the muzzle brake, I'm gonna leave it in here for now, but uh, to slice it off, you have to kind of like remove the structure like this around the whole thing and then it'll come off as like a cage and then you just cut the supports from the other end and it's actually pretty straightforward. These, they look pretty good as I, as far as I can see from there. And they're also gonna be way better than the molded plastic and even the metal barrel, like machined brass ones because those are multiple parts and you, and you end up with seam lines between them. In real life, these are one big casting that is then machined back so there shouldn't be any seam lines on it at all. So next up I have this full set here which is for a Panther. It is the entire tool racks completely set up with the empty clamps basically. I, I believe they also make this another set with the tools molded in place. So this is more like if you're going to do a burned out vehicle or abandoned vehicle or something like that. Or you could buy this and just take a couple of tools in if you wanted to. I will say that again the tool clamps look they look pretty small so hey, I think you're gonna have a little trouble actually sliding some tools in there if you want to especially that axe that nothing's gonna go through that axe handle holder there for sure uh, but I bought this set to do a completely abandoned and stripped vehicle so that's not a problem in my case additionally there's also a little bit of a fail like it's a little dimple right there but you can fix that with a tiny amount of putty overall these look really good and you do get if you can see those little guys along the end there inside that those are the little locking pins that go into the holes which you can maybe make out in those pegs there which lock in the cable and the C hooks on these little triple pegs sticking out there and there and that is a very very nice detail though you might want to add a super scale chain to attach those to the actual rack the last set I want to look at today is this set here from Master and this is really impressive it is a combination of turned brass and 3D printed antenna mount for a Panzer III. They have a few other options as well for like the standard mount. This is a swinging one you see on earlier Panzer III's. They also have a command antenna one with the star, with the star antenna at the top. I have one of those as well, but this is the most impressive one. And I've actually put it on my Panzer III so we can take a look at that. And on the model, it looks very, very good. That is the base right there and it looks a thousand times better than the big plastic blob that was on there previously. I, I'm not saying you need to buy all this stuff, but maybe you saw one thing in this video and thought, hey, that's perfect for my upcoming project, and maybe that helped you somehow. Uh, in general, this stuff looks pretty good. As I mentioned, some of them, the tool clamps are under scale, which might be an issue if you're trying to actually mount a, a tool into it, though if you're doing an abandoned vehicle, it's not an issue. Uh, but definitely the MJ standard tool clamps are the best. Uh, and um, also, don't buy FC Model Trend stuff, it's always really bad. I will have upcoming videos soon on painting and weathering this Panzer III and my Yag Panzer IV I showed and other stuff, but it's all taking forever. Uh, so that's why I gave you some looks into some of these details I've bought because I think they're interesting and maybe they'll help you guys out. If you have any questions or comments about this video, you can post them in the comment section below because I always read through them all. And if you want to support my work and give me a few dollars every month just to help me buy accessories to review and paints and products and stuff like that for the videos, you could support me on Patreon with the link on the screen now. It is much appreciated. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye, stay safe, and happy modeling. See ya.